and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. Tonight, we continue our series of debates. Tonight, it is the District 1 Supreme Court race. This district includes most of Jefferson Parish, St. Tammany, Tangibaho, Washington, as well as parts of Orleans and St. Helena Parish. It's a special election as former Justice Greg Guidry vacated this seat after being appointed to the federal bench by President Donald Trump. This term is for 10 years. Four candidates have qualified to run. All Republicans, all are here tonight. They are First Circuit Court of Appeals Judge Will Crane, Richard Decody, a lawyer based in St. Tammany Parish, Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals Judge Hans Liljeberg, and Jefferson Parish District Court Judge Scott Schlegel. We'll start with a brief opening statement. We'll go alphabetically. So Judge Crane, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. Thank you, Travers. My name is Will Crane. I'm a lifelong resident of the North Shore where my wife and I have raised our four children. I practiced law for 22 years before becoming a district court judge. For the last seven years, I've served as a court of appeal judge where I've authored over 300 opinions which confirm my core belief that judges should interpret the law, not legislate. I have served with distinction at every level of the judicial branch and the judiciary and will do so as your next Supreme Court Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Dakota, you have 30 seconds to yes, make sir. an opening statement. Good evening, Travis. My name is Richard Dakota. I've practiced law for 41 years, have more experience than all three of my friends here. Uh, and my practice has been devoted to the protection of abused women and kids nationwide in 46 states as a special assistant DA in 19 parishes. I've gotten all sorts of honors and awards for my work. I uh, haven't been about making people rich. I've been about making uh, vulnerable people safe. I don't take a single penny of campaign contributions. No money from lawyers, businesses, family, friends, nobody. I'm also the only candidate who is pushing for, and I actually filed suit to enforce this, the opening of all judicial uh, misconduct records. Thank you, Mr. Ducote. Judge Logerberg, you have 30 seconds for an opening statement. My name is Hans Logerberg. I'm the only candidate in this race that checks all boxes. I've been a civil attorney, I've been a prosecutor, I've been a district judge, and I've been an appeals court judge. My values are God, family, country, and the rule of law. I've served you for 10 years in the district court, and you promoted me to the appeals court. I served you there for seven years. I have 17 years of judicial experience, and now I'm asking you to promote me to the Supreme Court to the next level. Thank you. Judge Lutcherberg, thank you. Judge Schlegel, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. Good evening. My name is Judge Scott Schlegel, and I'm running for the Louisiana Supreme Court because I have a plan to improve our system of justice. As a former prosecutor with almost 20 life sentences who's handled over 1,000 criminal cases, I understand what recidivism means and the ugly cycle of recidivism. As a former victim of a violent crime, I also understand the true cost that crime has on a family. As a former civil attorney, I understand the cost of litigation is far too high. We have to reimagine our system of justice and do a better job so we can make it more efficient and more accessible to everyone. Judge Schlegel, thank you. This first question is for you again. 30 seconds to answer this one. Should you have to be an appellate court judge before becoming a judge on the Supreme Court? It's a great question, Travers. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, as a former civil attorney, as a former prosecutor who's lived and breathed the courtroom and tried numerous cases, and as a district court judge who actually acts in real time making those decisions, I don't believe you have to be an appellate court judge before you become a Louisiana Supreme Court justice. It's like asking a referee on the football field whether or not they can still do the job going into the instant replay booth and slow down and hit replay. Of course that individual could do the job. All right, thank you, Judge Lodgerberg, Judge Schlegel. Judge Lodgerberg, same question. Do you have to be an appellate court judge, or should you be an appellate court judge before being promoted to the Supreme Court? You have 30 seconds. As I said, I'm, I've been on the appeals court for seven years. I sat on the district court before that for 10 years. I, I review cases. I review lower court decisions right now, and I can tell you it's a huge asset to have served in the district court where I am now because I can read the nuances. I think the same thing applies to the Supreme Court. In order to be an effective Supreme Court judge, justice, you have to have experience at every level in the judiciary. All right, thank you, Judge. Mr. Ducote, same thing, 30 seconds. Should you be an appeals court judge before being elected to the Supreme Court? You don't have to be. The two longest serving Supreme Court justices in Louisiana Supreme Court history, Justice Caligaro and Justice Fournay, were never judges of any kind before they were elected to the, United, uh, to the Louisiana Supreme Court. 
Additionally, I won a case in the United States Supreme Court. The judge who wrote the opinion, Byron White, had never been a judge of any sort before he was appointed to the United States Supreme Court. And Chief Justice Rehnquist, who was on the panel that I argued before, that I won 9-0 in 1992, had never been a judge of any kind before he was elected, uh, appointed to the United States Supreme Court. So it's not a requirement. Thank you, Mr. Ducote. Judge Crane, same question, 30 I, seconds. I believe that the position on the Supreme Court should be the progression over the course of a career. I have sat at every level, at the district court level, where you exercise the type of discretion that you do in making those decisions. Until you have sat as an appellate court judge and actually faced determining whether that trial judge has abused his discretion or not, if you have not sat in that position, then you obviously don't have that experience. So I believe that, that uh, having served at every level, that it is important to have the breadth of experience to serve at the highest uh, level of, of the court system in our state. Thank you, we'll start this question with you. You have one minute to answer this question. Should judiciary complaints be secretive or should the public know about the complaints when they're made and against two. Once again, you have one minute. I believe that a, 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 there should be no private reprimand of a public official. Uh, that means that once a complaint rises to the level of discipline, that should be wide open. I believe that at the same time that there should be some threshold that a complaint should have to make before it becomes public simply because as a judge, we disappoint someone every day. Uh, someone wins, someone loses. If you are subject to an open complaint every time there's a win or a loss, then it can affect your independence as a judge. So there should be some level of, or standard that we should meet. And we've got smart enough people to establish what that standard is. Once a charge though, discipline charge is made, at that point the record should be completely open and, and, and open to the public. All right, thank you, Judge. Mr. Ducote, same question. Absolutely not. All, all these records need to be public. We've had a, a big scandal on the Supreme Court because of, of these sorts of shenanigans. Uh, again, I'm the one who has called out this to be a primary issue in this election. I'm the one who filed suit to declare the statute unconstitutional. You know, where have my friends been for the last several of their careers when these uh, cover-ups with these judges have occurred. Uh, absolutely not, it needs to be public. All right, Judge Lodgerberg, same question, one minute. Public officials, reprimands should be public. I think for the, for the people to have confidence in the judiciary, when a judge is sanctions, it needs to be public. Judge Schlegel, same question. I would agree, once the uh, complaint has been verified, it should become public. Look, if we don't have faith and confidence in our system of justice, we will have a constitutional crisis. All right, let's start this question with you, Judge Schlegel. As the highest court in Louisiana, should you disclose campaign contributions from litigants or their lawyers that have cases in front of you? You have one minute. Sure. Uh, our canons, judicial canons, do not allow judges to take money or ask for money. All those campaign finances are done by a committee that is created. All those records are public and they are disclosed. All right, Judge Lutzerberg, same thing. One minute. I think that the, the, the judicial campaign contribution thing is sort of a red herring. I've served you for 17 years, and I haven't been bought and paid for by big business or anybody else. I, I do the right thing. Every lawyer that's practiced in front of me will tell you that he or she has gotten a fair shake. Uh, we don't know who the contributions are, so we can't sue the contributions where they come from, so we can't disclose it. But that is free for anybody to see, and you can file a motion to recuse if you believe you have a basis. Mr. Ducote, one minute, same question. Well, okay, it's not, it's not true. The, ca the candidates do know who, who's contributing the, their campaign, and this is why this so, is so important, because this is the truth. Judge Slagle's campaign took $25,000 from the Texas Brine Company, which is involved in approximately 20 multi-million dollar suits in Louisiana, in the courts, and over 100 filings in the First Circuit Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. Now, why some Texas company wants to give his campaign $25,000, 20 of which is totally illegal, uh, it, it's obvious. It erodes the confidence in the public. Really quickly, we'll give you a chance to respond to that in about 20 seconds, if you want, because you were mentioned by name. So, look, again, our campaign, campaign finances are done by committees. I don't personally raise any funds whatsoever. If anybody knows me and cares to know about me, they know that my 
integrity and honesty is first and foremost. And to suggest otherwise means that you have not ever actually spent the time to visit with me and get to know me. All right, Judge Crane, going back to that question, should, as the highest court in the land, should you disclose campaign contributions from litigants or their lawyers that have cases in front of you? Simple answer, it is yes. There should be full disclosure and transparency of all contributions, and there should be ready access, easy access for the public to get to those.